MongoDB, as you might know, is the leading NoSQL database today. It stores the data in flexible JSON-like documents, unlike the tables with rows and columns which might have seen in SQL databases. Now the best thing about MongoDB is that it is extremely simple to install and implement and it also provides you high performance, high availability and automatic scaling. A very nice product which is provided by the MongoDB organization itself is called MongoDB Atlas which is a cloud platform which can provide you MongoDB as a service. So basically you do not need to install and set up MongoDB in your local machine. You can directly use MongoDB cluster which will be hosted on cloud for you by MongoDB Atlas. And the nice thing about it is that you can use it for free. So you can get started with it with a free tire cluster so that you can get a gist of it that how to interact with it or how to deal with it. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about MongoDB in detail. Instead, our focus will be on MongoDB Atlas and how to integrate it in our Python applications. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you'll have to do is that you'll have to create a new account on MongoDB Atlas. So you can just click on try free and then you will be able to just fill this particular form and then you will be get start you will get started for free you will get a new account so once that is done you will get your dashboard on the mongodb cloud or the mongodb atlas so this is a dashboard and now the first thing that you have to do is that you have to create a cluster so first of all click on build a cluster and then it will ask you that which cloud provider that you need to use so basically mongodb atlas actually uses the services of some other cloud providers like AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform. So by default, we are setting taking AWS and we are taking the region as North Virginia, let's say. And let's just move on and let's just click on create cluster. And as you can see that it is free, right? So we are using the free cluster, which will have some basic resources. So we just need to learn it. That's why we are going to go with free. So now our cluster is being created. While my cluster is being created, let me go to the security tab and let me do some important things that I need to do here. So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to add a database user. So the Mongo database that you have can uh, will need a database user through which you can interact with it. So I will, I'm just going to click on add new user and here I'm just going to click on um, and I'm just going to create a new user. I'm giving it a name as username as test and the password is also test and I'm, I can give it different kind of user privileges. So I'm going to give you the privilege of read and write to my database and I'm just going to click on add user. So a database user is the user through which you can take any actions on your database. And that's why I created our database user here. Now the next thing is that you have to provide an IP whitelist. So IP whitelist is just uh, the list of IP addresses through which I can interact with my MongoDB cluster through some Python code or any kind of code. So right now I will have to add some IP addresses. Now you can get your own IP address. You can just get the value of your IP address by going to http bin.org slash IP. So this is an API which provides you your IP address. So you can just copy paste that here in the IP address. But if you want to just do not provide a lot of restrictions, then you can just put 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. So by providing this particular IP address, you mean to say that you are going to allow any kind of IP address to access my MongoDB cluster. So I'm just going to put it here and I'm just going to click on confirm. So it's your choice. If you want to be a bit more sure about your security of your MongoDB cluster, then you can simply um, change the IP address here. You can just put your specific IP address like I have this one. So yeah, so once that is done, the next thing is that I will have to now check whether my cluster is complete. So yeah, so my cluster is complete here as you can see. And now I can just click on collections. So now I'm going to click on collections. So now in a MongoDB database, there are multiple collections which are like tables. So it is now asking me to create a database first. So now let us go to the basics. First of all, we need to have a database. So for that, you need to click on create database. 
So let me create a database for students of any particular university. So let me call it student underscore db. So student underscore db is the name of my Mongo database and I have to create my first collection as well, which means you can think of it like my first table. So my first collections name, let's say is student underscore records. So student records is my first collection name and I'm just going to click on create. So it is going to create my first collection. Okay, so here's my collection in which it is showing me that currently I have zero documents in my collection. So a document is just like a row of a table if you want to provide an analogy. So if you compare it with a table, then a table has multiple rows. So similarly, a collection has multiple documents. So right now I have zero documents. So let me create a document here. So in student records, so let me just click on student records and now I can create a new document. So I'm just going to click on insert document. So now it is giving me a nice UI in which I can create a new document. So for the documents, the documents are just like JSON format, in JSON format. So they are just like key value pairs. So right now this ID is actually the identifier of my document. So I cannot change it. But for my other key value pairs, let's say name is let's say Nikhil and let me just provide anything else like roll number so if i want roll number to be an integer then let me just choose int 32 here so this is my roll number let me put it one two three and other than that let me put branch so branch let's say cse and that's it so let me just click on insert so what it will do is that it will create a new document in my collection and now as you can see that i have one document in my collection which is this one so in this way, we can use the UI of MongoDB Atlas dashboard directly to enter or insert some documents or you can also query your current collection by just doing something like, let's say you want to find only that particular document where the name is Nikhil. So let me just write this and click on enter. So here's the result that yes, this one is matching. So now if I just put the name as something else, let me just put the name as anything else and let me click on enter so it is showing query result zero so no document was matching so yeah so this is how you use your mongodb cluster or mongodb atlas and now we are going to see how do we interact with this particular cluster of the cloud using some python code okay so the first thing that we have to do here is to install pymongo package in python so pymongo is a library which will help you to interact with any kind of mongo database so simply doing pip install pymongo will install it for you and you can just check if your installation was correct or not by running this command which is from pymongo import mongo client so mongo client is a class which will create a client object for you so let us create a client object so client is equal to mongo client in which i have to pass the url of my mongo database and for that, I will have to go to the overview of my cluster. And in the cluster, I will have to go to connect. So in the connect, I will choose connect your application because I have an application. And then if I, if I go to Python and choose your version, let's say 3.6 or later. So here is your connection string. So let me just copy it. So this is my connection string, which I'm just going to paste here. So in the connection string, this much part between separated by the colon is your database users username and the password so if i remember i had set the database username as test and the password was also test so i'm just putting it like this so this is the url of my mongodb client and let me just run it so in this way we have got a very simple client and now in the through the client i have to get my database object so database is client dot get database in which I will pass the name of my database. So the name of my database was student underscore db. So student underscore db is my database and after that I need to get my collection object. So in order to get the collection object in my database I will have to do db dot the name of my collection object which was student underscore records. So in this way I will be able to get my collection object. So now Let's go through the first operation that I might want to do with my MongoDB collection. 
So the first thing that I want to do is to check the count of the documents that I have currently in my collection. So for that, the function that you can use is count underscore documents in which you can also pass a filter. So a filter is passed in the form of a dictionary in which you provide some key value pairs. But if you do not want to provide any filter, then you can provide an empty dictionary. So like this and let me run it. So let's see what happens. So we get the output as one, which means that right now in my collection, I have only one document. So as we can see right now in my collection, I have only one document, right? So that's it. And now let us go through the next operation, which we want to do, which is to create a new document. So as we know that the, the documents of a collection are just JSON like objects. And JSON like objects are quite comparable to a dictionary and that's what that's where um, the PyMongo will make it easy for you to create new documents. All you need to do is that you need to use the function which is insert document uh, which is simply insert underscore one. So if you want to insert a single document at once then you will use the function insert underscore one in which you will pass your dictionary which contains your document data. So here I have a dictionary which is called new student. So I'll simply do doc records dot insert one new student. So let me run it. So it has been done. So let me just try to refresh this particular page to see if we have got the second document here as well or not. So yeah, so the total number of documents is being shown as two and here is the other document which we just created, right? So in this way, we are able to create new documents by using some simple Python code. Also, if I want to add multiple documents in a single call, then I can use the simple insert function. So insert function will take a list of dictionaries and each dictionary will be created in the form of a new document. So new underscore students is my list. So I'm just going to run it and it created both of them. Well, it is saying that insert function is actually deprecated. So it's better if you use insert many function here, right? So yeah, so this is done. So let me just refresh this page again to see if we got four documents or not. So now my collection contains four documents, right? So we have four documents now like this and that's done. So this is how you insert any new document to your collection in MongoDB. Now the next step is, let's say we want to retrieve some document. We want to find some document. So what you do in that case? So if you want to get all the documents, then you will simply use find function and simply run it. So it will return you a cursor object. So a cursor object is just like a Python iterator. So just like an iterator, you have to call next function again and again in order to get the next value. Similarly, you will have to do something similar here, but you can simply do so you can simply type cast it with the list function, which will automatically call the next function for you and it will create your complete object, the complete output that you require. So list type casting will give you all the data that you need and we get four objects in return. So in this way, you can use the find. Also, let's say you want to find only one document, let's say, and you want to filter it with some condition, which is, let's say, I want to find only one student whose roll number is let's say one, two, three. So I can just put a dictionary inside my find one function in which I will put my filter. So my filter is that find all documents in which there is a key, which is roll number and the value is one, two, three. So let me just run it and look at that. We get the desired result. So in this way, we can use this filter thing. And this is how you find any particular document by using find, you will get multiple ones. By using find one, you will get the first matching document. Now let's come to the update part. So let's say I have some user's data. Let's say I have the data of a user whose roll number is one, two, three. The name is Nikhil. And let's say I want to change the name of the student. Let me just change the name. Let's say I want to make N capital here. So I will have to, first of all, specify a new dictionary, which contains all the updates that I need. So let me just call it updates or let me just call it student updates and in the student updates, I will just put the name as the correct name that I need now, right? 
so this is what I need to be updated so I will use the function called update for my collection object in which I will have to pass two things first of all I need to just tell that which particular document do I want to update so for that I will use again a filter just like I use in find so let's say I want to change the name of the person whose roll number is 123 so I will just put roll number is 123 and the second argument that you need to give here is the update that you want to do and according to the syntax you have to do something like this dollar set is equal to your new dictionary that you want to use for updation so in this way you have to just write it and well you should use update underscore one here so update underscore one is actually used for updating a single result so yeah so this is done so let me just run my find function again to check if the name was changed or not so look at that the name got changed or you can say updated and in this way you can update any given field of any given document by using the update underscore one function you can also use update underscore many if you want to update multiple documents in that case this filter will be applied on all the documents and all the matching documents will get replaced by this particular um, update so yeah so this was all about updation and let's move on to the last operation which is deletion so deletion is quite straightforward so let's say I want to delete a record where so delete one is that is delete one is used for deleting a single matching record and delete many is used for recording for deleting all the matching records so record delete underscore one in which I will have to pass again a filter which will delete that particular document where it is matching for the first time so let's say I want to delete a user whose roll number is one two three so I will just write roll number one two three and that's it so it got deleted so if I just try to find here again the person with the roll number one two three it will give me nothing so it means that the user does not exist it got deleted so now I must be having only three documents so if I just try to see the count documents I get only three so yeah it got deleted so in this way you can use Python in order to d interact with your MongoDB uh, you can say MongoDB cluster and I hope the concepts are clear and I hope you got how to set up your mongodb atlas cluster as well it is quite easy to do and since it is free then since it is free up to a limit so you can easily get um, a better idea of it by just doing the things yourself so yeah so this was all about it if you still have doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching